In this lecture, we are going to go over a different type of alkane called a cycloalkane. So looking down below, normally if we had propane, that would be a normal chain of carbon atoms. And we would have the maximum amount of hydrogens possible. So that would be C3H8. However, let's say that we create a uh, ring structure with our three carbons. We have to lose two hydrogens in the process, so it becomes cyclopropane with three carbons and six hydrogens. So this is kind of similar to um, an alkene where you lose two hydrogens to create the double bond. But here we're creating a ring structure. And notice that all of the bonds are single bonds. So it's still an alkane, but it's just a cyclic alkane. Now you can write out all of the carbons and hydrogens in your structural formula, or you can draw the condensed formula, which is just a simple triangle for cyclopropane, um, a square, for cyclobutane, a pentagon for cyclopentane, and a hexagon for cyclohexane. Now in the condensed formula, the hydrogen atoms are just assumed. So um, each corner would have two hydrogens and each corner represents a carbon. So, the naming here is really easy. We're just adding cyclo in front of each of the alkane names. So again, cycloalkanes are alkanes containing rings of carbon atoms, and the prefix cyclo is used before the alkane name. Now, what if we have two groups attached to our ring, uh, or more? Um, if you do have multiple groups attached to the ring, we're going to number the ring beginning with the first group alphabetically. And then we're just going to make sure that each group has the lowest number possible. So when we're naming a compound like the one below, we have our ring structure and we've got five carbons in the ring. So that would be cyclopentane, and then we have two groups attached. So the one on the top is uh, has two carbons, so that would be called ethyl, and then the one down below has one carbon, so that would be called methyl. Now we're going to start numbering at the uh, group um, that comes first alphabetically. So ethyl starts with an E, methyl starts with an M. So we're going to start numbering at the ethyl group. So one, and then we have to decide, do we go clockwise or counterclockwise when we're numbering? But we again, we wanna make sure that the other group has the lowest number possible. So in this case, we're going to go clockwise to make sure that the methyl group has the lowest number possible. If we had gone the other way around the ring, the methyl group would be at position four, but that's not the lowest number possible. Okay, so then uh, we would add to our name. So we would write one ethyl, and ethyl goes first because it comes first alphabetically and then dash three dash methyl. So the full name is 1-ethyl-3-methyl-cyclopentane. Okay, so let's practice. So I'm gonna give you a couple of molecules here and I would like you to try to name them.
Okay, so see if you can name these three molecules on your own first, and when you're done, we'll go over them together. All right, so let's start with the first one on the top. So we're going to start by naming the ring system. So this one has three corners or three carbons. So how would we name that? Cyclopropane. And now we also have to name the group that's attached. And what is that group called? Methyl. Now, because this is the only group attached, we don't necessarily have to give it a number because we're not trying to, for instance, uh, show the location compared to another group that's attached. So we could just write methyl cyclopentane, or propane, excuse me. You could put a one in front if you wanted to, um, but it's not necessary. Let's look at the next one. So what is the largest ring structure here? Cyclobutane. Okay, and then we have two groups attached. What is the group on the top called? Ethyl. And the one on the bottom? Methyl. Okay, so remember, we want to start numbering based on the alphabet. So ethyl comes first, so we're going to give that a number one at its attachment point. And we want to make sure the methyl group has the lowest number possible, so we'll just uh, put that at position two. Okay, so now let's add um, those names in front. I'm just going to give myself some room here. So ethyl would come first, so that would be 1-ethyl, and then we'll add dash 2-methyl, cyclobutane. Okay, and let's go to our last structure here. So what would the name of this ring be? Cyclo Okay, and then we have two groups attached, one that has three carbons and one that has one carbon. So we already know the one down below is methyl, but what about the one at the top? How would we name that group? Propyl. So what, co what comes first alphabetically, methyl or propyl? Methyl comes first. Okay, so that would be given a number one. And then do we want a number going clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, because we want to make sure the propyl group has the lowest number possible. Okay, so methyl is going to come first, so that would be 1-methyl followed by 3-propyl cyclohexane. All right, so not too bad. So now let's talk a little bit more about the shapes of cycloalkanes. So here we have some three-dimensional pictures of um, well, not actually three-dimensional, but attempting to be three-dimensional pictures of our different cycloalkanes. Um, and you'll notice that the angles between carbons is going to change depending on um, uh, which ring structure you're looking at. Oops, sorry. So for example, looking at cyclopropane, um, that's just a triangle. So the angle is going to be 60 degrees. And is that ideal for a carbon-carbon bond? 
No, remember carbons like to have um, a tetrahedral shape if they're bonded to four different objects or groups. So the uh, typical angle for carbon and its different bonds is 109.5 degrees. So cyclopropane isn't going to be a very stable molecule because the angles are so small. Cyclobutane is the same, uh, but the angle is a little bit better. So the angle here would be 90 degrees since it's a square. Um, and that's just going to keep increasing as we go all the way up to cyclohexane. So five and six membered rings are the more stable because the angles are closer to the ideal angle that we want. The other thing to notice is where all of the uh, groups are. So let's look at cyclohexane. Um, we're gonna look at the chair form because that's the more common one. Notice that groups can either be pointing up or down. And that is going to affect the um, structure of certain compounds. So we could have different isomers of these ring structures. So for instance, stereoisomers are compounds with the same structural formula, but different spatial arrangements of atoms. Now remember when we were discussing regular alkanes, we said that there is rotation about carbon-carbon single bonds. However, this does not occur with ring structures. So down below, you can see that free rotation is not possible with a ring structure because we'd have to break the ring in order to rotate those bonds. So the ring is kind of stuck in place. And again, that's going to affect the kind of structures that we see. So for instance, geometric isomers are molecules with restricted rotation around carbon-carbon bonds that differ in the three-dimensional arrangements of their atoms in space, but not in the order of linkage of atoms. So they're not necessarily structural isomers. Um, these have to do more with the geometry. So down below, we have a couple of examples of geometric isomers. So we have 1,2-dimethyl cyclopentane for each. So the arrangement of atoms is the same in terms of the order of linkage, right? It's still 1,2-dimethyl cyclopentane. The only difference between these two structures is where the groups are positioned. So on the first one, we have our two groups, and they're both pointing down. In the other structure, one is pointing up, the other is pointing down, so they're opposite of each other. So in order to tell these two molecules apart, we're going to use the terms cis and trans. So cis substituents, or groups are on the same side of the molecule. Trans substituents or groups are on the opposite side. So in our first structure, this one is considered a cis uh, geometry because the two groups are on the same side. So they could also be pointing up um, as long as they're both on the same side, that's what matters. In the other structure, this is considered a trans structure because the groups are on opposite sides of the molecule. So again, the order of the atoms is the same. So both of these groups are on carbons one and two, but the geometry is different. So these are geometric isomers. All right, so let's practice.
Okay, so uh, let's look at this structure here. And then we're also going to look at this structure. Okay, so in the first structure, would you say that that is a cis geometry or a trans geometry? A cis geometry. So both of those methyl groups are pointing up. So both groups are pointing up. So that would be cis. What about the second structure? Would that be a cis geometry or a trans geometry? Trans, there are, one is pointing up, one is pointing down. One group is up, one is down. So this would be trans. Okay. So next time, we're going to wrap up this chapter on alkanes, and we'll talk a little bit about physical properties of alkanes, as well as reactions of alkanes. So I will see you then.